Um, let's have a quick look at the time. It's 7.38. We're going to take you back to our main story this morning, and that's about the high-speed rail link. For some, of course, it's a chance to revolutionise Britain's railway system. That's what they're saying to others, a multi-billion pound white elephant set to ruin parts of our countryside. Yes, the controversial high-speed rail link between London and Birmingham is expected to get the thumbs up from government today. In a moment, we'll speak to those on both sides of the debate. First, though, Louise Hubble looks at what the project will involve. The new high-speed trains would be up to 400 metres long and travel at 225 miles per hour. And the government says the first phase of the project alone would create 400,000 jobs. Eventually, the government believes that trains with over 1,000 seats mean that as many as 6 million air trips and 9 million road trips a year would shift onto the rail network. A Y-shaped extension taking the high-speed line north of Birmingham to northeast and northwest England would not be completed until around 2032. Opposition to the project is strong. Many are outraged the 100-mile connection would cut through some of Britain's most picturesque countryside, including here in the Chilterns. Others are surprised that the proposed route doesn't provide a direct link to Heathrow Airport. Louise Hubble, BBC News. So let's talk about some of those issues now. Transport journalist Christian Walmer is here. The rail enthusiast Pete Waterman also. And the chairman of the Action Groups Against High Speed 2. That's Jerry Marshall. Good morning, Good morning. to everyone. Morning. Jerry, can I start with you? Sure. Uh, as there is this sense that people complaining about this are, you know, NIMBYs. They don't want it near them and it's in their back gardens. Can you just establish the case you are making? Yeah. I think there were people close to the line that first blew the whistle, but of course now we're joined by a whole range of organisations from the Green Party to uh, Adam Smith Institute. The problem is it's horrendously expensive, £1,700 per household in the UK, and it will cost four jobs for every one it creates. There are much better alternatives. Uh, the West Coast Main Line isn't the most congested. Uh, people who take the train in from Reading to Paddington will know what a really congested line Can is. Can I just stop you there? Yep, four, sure. four jobs for every one? Can yep. you explain that? Um, yeah, it's so expensive. It will cost us a lot of nurses and policemen and soldiers in order to pay the £45 billion net cost to the taxpayer. And the jobs that are created is something like £800,000 per job. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, Christian, as somebody who's been writing about railways for decades... Is this something you favour, the high-speed railway? No, I'm a s real sceptic on this. Oh. I would love to say this is the best thing since uh, sliced bread or whatever. But, you know, I think it's so much money being poured into one route. And the other thing is there's no environmental case for it. I mean, basically, the government is saying, well, it will take some people out of planes and stuff. And actually, when you look at it, it won't. It, it basically, uh, there is no reduction in the amount of carbon uh, that's uh, produced by this. And I think okay. that's a big setback right. for the let's, supporters. Let's ask people, because we've got two people on the other side of the sofa who think this is a really bad idea. What are your thoughts? I think they're daft. Do you? I think they're completely bloody barmy. Why? Because they don't look at the history of railways. I've heard every one of these arguments since 1835. We built motorways in the 1960s. We still run with a Victorian railway system. We're the only country in Europe that has a Victorian railway system. We invented railways and we can't even use them properly. It's £32 billion. Pounds. It's cheap. It's, it's poor use of taxpayers' money, Absolutely. they're saying. But, it's the wrong we priority. Can't, we cannot, see it for 14 we years. cannot look at railways financially and say it costs this. Because you cannot do that. Of course you can. You have no, to you do can't. That. You can't. You cannot. That is ne you can never make. I'm sorry. You can never make any real case financially for a railway. It doesn't work. There are You're going to change the channel tunnel. Are you going to change the high speed one? These have all been massive benefits. High this will change life in Great Britain. I'm high sorry. Speed high speed one is not a failure. Okay, all right. Well, let's Jerry, just do this. This is it. nonsense. Let's this is just rhetoric. Speed. High speed one is running at one third of forecast demand. It costs the taxpayer billions, and commuters are up in arms at how lousy the service is. There are much better things we can you do. Travel on it, Liverpool do you? to Manchester you on it, is 45 miles an hour. Those are the ones that we need to work on this and get, get uh, traffic from cars. Do you commute onto, by train? Onto trains. Do you commute by train? <laughs> 
There are you much... don't, do you I commute? Do. I, I go to, to where? I always take the train to London okay. whenever I possibly can. Well, They're great. Well, I, I, I commuted from Coventry every day money. for 10 years. It's a great service Every to day for 10 okay. years, okay. I can be messed up. Christian. Can I slightly umpire this? Because, I, I mean, I think a lot of the arguments against are a little bit dishonest about, you know, how much it's going to cost each taxpayer and so on. But I think... Pete is wrong in saying that this is the only thing that has to happen and it's uh, got to go ahead. There's a lot of ways of improving the railway. For example, Absolutely. if you really want to get people out of their cars, what you'd do is build 15 or 20 tram systems in all the major cities in Britain, not build one line that is going to suck up all the rail investment for the next 20 years and leave the rest of the network underinvested. Right. That's a key Pete, point. Pete, just answer that question, which is if you spread that amount of money across the whole rail well, infrastructure I don't know, around I don't the UK, it'll be better. Christian works for rail. I don't know whether he reads his own magazine because this government is not only spending money on HS2. You've got the Northern Hub. You've got the electrification of Manchester to Liverpool. You know, it's not one project. The country is spending money on railways like it's now. We've not spent money for 60 years on railways. This is the first time that our railways are a success story. Let's pat them on the back and say, at last, it's something we're doing is successful. working. Can I just ask you, in practical terms, Presumably for your campaign, today is a very bad day because this green light is going ahead. But do you see it as just the beginning? Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the, the beginning of the next stage, absolutely. Uh, we expected the government to go ahead. They, they are likely to ignore the consultation and the Transport Select Committee. Uh, so now the next stage is uh, moving to the hybrid bill in a couple of years' time. Uh, and given that now two-thirds of the country are against HS2, we're pretty sure it will be kicked into the long grass. Sadly, not until the government have uh, blown about a billion pounds on developing it. But Pete's case is that it's a Victorian antiquated railway system. It needs improved. In, in a sense, it... It, you've got to spend the money at some stage. Uh Absolutely, but then? we actually have higher customer satisfaction with our railways than all our main competitors, including higher satisfaction on journey time than our competitors. We have a really good system and, and a lot of high-speed track. All we need to do is to speed up our existing track and treble capacity as we can do on the West Coast Main Line uh, and deal with the yeah. East Coast Main Line. We, you know, we need the Reading Heathrow link, we need the Northern Hub, as you say. Uh, we, we need to relieve okay. congestion on the really busy lines. I would like to thank all thank three you of you very, very much, much indeed. All of You're you, welcome. Manu. This is a debate that will go on and on, indeed. actually probably for the next 14 years, because it's <laughs> unlikely to be built before then, is it? So thank, thank you, you very much. much. That's thank when you. we'll see it.